Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Power Life TV channel, Power Life TV broadcast. It is Pastor Brian. And Pastor Tasha. And we are restoring families. Listen, we're happy to be here today. It is Friday. 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 One of my favorite days. Amen. One of my favorite. You know, every day is a good day. That's true. It's the day that the Lord has made. We, we will, will rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. So tell us what you got planned for the weekend, baby. Amen. <laughs> I know I'm going to church on Sunday. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be good. You said I have a little bit too much energy. Uh, mm. You know, I just, so early in the morning. You have kind of a two-way energy. Kind of like, you know, when you're trying to put a kid to bed. Yeah. And, and TV is on and yeah. they're really fighting that sleep. Yeah, yeah, that's the kind of energy. I don't think I'm fighting sleep though. Oh, okay. Probably, you know, uh, we're on what day? Day four, day mm -hmm. five, mm -hmm. and I'm just kind of like feeling good. Okay. Feeling good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, we have been talking about restoring families and restoring the foundation. Okay. And. Uh, this has been a good series. This is Kingdom Families. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about the fathers. Right. Now, just to do a little bit of a recap, uh, in Kingdom Families, the foundation is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we look at the family as the foundation, but really, uh, let's, let's bring it all the way back to the true foundation and how God created it. And it was he was expecting the man to be the foundation, the father That's to be right. the foundation. That's right. And so um, we want to restore families. We want to get families back to the roots of things. And so we've been dealing with, uh, out of Proverbs chapter, uh, what is that, four? Proverbs chapter four and verse one, we've been talking about the instruction of a father and, and teaching the, the children how to be disciplined and, and follow instructions. Mm -hmm. And so... <laughs> It, the, the, the role of a father, which I've just thoroughly enjoyed this, the role of a father is very, very pivotal in, in a family's success. I agree. And so let's, let's jump back into it again. Let's read our text scripture and we will uh, see what the Lord has to say today. So Proverbs 4, 1 through 5 says this. Hear my children the instruction of a father mm -hmm. and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, do not forsake my law. For when I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Yeah. So get wisdom. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a commandment to me. Right. We are to get wisdom. And so you you can't have any excuses. Well, I didn't know or uh, I, I'm doing the best I can and with what I'm working with. You know, God has given us some instructions and he's saying get wisdom. So we want you to tune in today. Get to, get your notebook, get your pen and let's get some wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, you say, well, I, I haven't been a good father. Well, let's it's time to repent and start on, in the process of being a good father. God is not looking for your perfection. He's looking for your progress. Right. And, you know, what we've come to find is that there's a lot of power in being a good father. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the best time to change is now. The mm -hmm. best day is today. Yeah, the so good. best moment is, is right now. So, so, um, so we're going back to where we left off. And, you know, one of the things, and I think we've mentioned it for the past three <laughs> Uh, broadcast, but the word father means source in its simplest form, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, something or someone, uh, uh, a place or, or a source from which something or someone could be obtained. Mm -hmm. Father also means origin, birthplace of, the fountainhead, the start point, and ground zero. It's so good. Yeah. So when we call when we call God our Father, then now we're saying, God, you are you are my source. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. You are uh, the 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 beginning of who I am. Mm -hmm. uh, the source of all sin is determined by who you make Father. Now, God, when you are born, God is your Father when you are born, but you may choose. Mm -hmm. To make someone else your father, just mm -hmm. as Adam did in that garden. Right. 
right. uh, the Bible says that you are subject to whom you obey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it be sin or whether it be righteousness, you are subject to whom you, you, you obey. In other words, you're a slave to whom you make your source. Right, exactly. If, yeah. if God be your source, you're a slave to righteousness. Mm -hmm. But now if you allow Satan to be your source, you become a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and of course that determines your father. Now the function, we have to think about function. Mm. The function of father is to bless. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I wanna talk about that. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the blessing? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the blessing is the enablement. The blessing is the empowerment. Uh, we bless uh, a lot of times by, you know, in, in what we call the natural world mm -hmm. through material. Right. I'm going to bless my family. You know, they're thinking I'm going to buy them a trip or, you know, buy them a car or buy them a house. I'm blessing my family. The greatest blessing that you can give to your family is words, proper mm -hmm. words, words of edification, words of encouragement, mm -hmm. words that will build up and not tear down. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, children have become so materialistic. If you say, I'm going to give y'all words instead of presents, they'll be like, what? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well. But that's why we got to train. You know, we got to, you know, if you teach, you teach your children in the way that they should go, if you run your household well, then everybody will understand that if the blessing is on the household, right. the material will come. That's because, true. Because how do we get to the material? Mm -hmm. Through the blessing. Yes. The blessing. Right. So we, we want to remember this. And, and men that are watching, thank you so much. But you want to remember this. You want to speak well over your households. Mm -hmm. Build them up, not tear them down. That's right. That's right. So when you choose God as your father, you bless your generations to come with good things. Mm -hmm. Now, what does the word bless mean? Mm -hmm. Bless means to empower, to prosper, and to gain wealth. Mm -hmm. The word bless is also synonymous with the word happy. If you look in the word of God, in the New Testament, rather than use the word bless, mm -hmm. in many translations, it'll say happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, uh, so another definition for blessed or blessing that I have coined as, is the, as the following. Happiness produced by experiencing the favor of God. Yeah, that's good. That's another definition mm -hmm. for bless mm -hmm. that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. It's happiness produced by experiencing the favor of God. So favor is is word dominated. Uh, absolutely. You produce favor by speaking right words. Yes, absolutely. Glory to God. You can speak favor over your household as blessing them. Yes, absolutely. And we see an example of that in the scripture. You know, Jesus gave the blessing of the Father to the children. We mm -hmm. see an example of that in scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, in Mark 10 and verse 13 through 16, we see it right here. And would you like for me to read it? Yeah, yes, look at that. It says, Then they brought little children to him, meaning Jesus, that he might touch them. But the disciple, disciples rebuked those who brought them. Mm. And when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For, listen to this, such is the kingdom mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as little children will by no means enter it. Mm. And he took mm. them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Mm -hmm. So then we see that Jesus did not just bless the children like we might think, oh, bless you, child. You know, mm -hmm. that's not what he did. He's, but he was holding them. Mm -hmm. He was imparting a blessing through meaningful words. Yeah, the Bible it. says that's that. It. that that they brought the little children to him that he might touch them. So he also included meaningful touch. Mm -hmm. Now, I should mention that he did not bless them through illicit touch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He That's only good. blessed them through meaningful touch. Mm -hmm. And he did not give them a touch of punishment or rebuke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why is that so important? It's because some people think that the only time 
that they can recall their father touching them is when it was a, either an inappropriate touch mm -hmm. or else a touch of punishment. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? A father's hands were designed mm -hmm. to bless, to bless, mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. impart, mm -hmm. and to impart blessings that come from above. Mm -hmm. That's good. So you That's know good. when a father sees himself in the image mm -hmm. and in the likeness of God, then his touch now. Mm -hmm has the power to, bre mm -hmm. to, to bless, to, to cause your children's territory to be uh, expanded, mm -hmm. to cause their mind to think, to, uh, to be expanded, mm -hmm. their ability to think, their ability to reason, their ability to speak. Mm -hmm. That's good. Why? Because the Father's touch should bring confidence. Mm -hmm. It should bring security. Mm -hmm. It should bring Peace. That's good. That's good. I'm thinking now about, you know, uh, being raised by my dad, you mm -hmm. know, and, and some of the most memorable times with my dad is when he would give me a hug. Right. You know, he would he would uh, tell me how proud he was of me. Mm -hmm. You know, that was something that in that was an impartation. It left uh, an impression upon my life. And it was something that I'll never forget. You know, some of the things while he was giving me instruction, mm -hmm. he was giving me a hug. Right. You know, it's one of those things that, and, and, and this is so good that we're talking about this, because your the touch or the blessing or, or the hands being laid upon a child can either evoke a good memory or a negative memory. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, I also remember when I got punished. <laughs> I also remember that when he would, you know, he would spank me because my brother and I would have a fight. So these things... I think that only happened once, right? <laughs> uh, not twice. Maybe twice. But, but it's, the thing of it is, is that you have to remember that anytime you touch your children, mm -hmm. it's going to create a memory in their mind. Right. I recall Jimmy Evans talking about his experiences and because... His father and himself had a very cold relationship. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when he married, uh, I think his wife's name is Karen, mm -hmm. and she would go to hold his hand. Mm -hmm. And rather than hold his her, her you know, her hand, he would find a way squeeze to it. either mm -hmm. squeeze it or dig his finger into her hand. And mm -hmm. she say, Ouch, that hurts. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. he never touched her hand with a loving and meaningful touch mm -hmm. until he got a revelation of God's goodness and also a, a revelation of who he was in Christ, mm. then he began to use That's his good. hands in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, he often talked about how uh, he was the octopus man. Mm -hmm. and, and what I mean by that is instead of hugging his uh, wife in non-sexual touch, which a lot of people desire non-sexual touch. Mm -hmm. It is a person's love language very mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. But if every time you're going to hug your spouse, you're grabbing an organ, mm -hmm. I'm just going to leave it right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then, yeah, you know, they'll learn to treat you based on your past behavior. Mm -hmm. They're not going to want you to hug them. Yeah. They're not going to want you to touch them because they're going to think the only time you do that is when you want something sexual. Mm -hmm. And a person wants to know that you care about them mm -hmm. and not just the you know the benefits that go along with being married to a person as far as uh, sexual needs mm -hmm. being met and, and, and I think we need to I, I know we're camping on this for a minute but I think people need to hear this because men and women alike mm -hmm. need to understand the importance of the blessing through touch right and when we touch you know uh, you maybe you're a mother of a 16 year old son or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whatever, 15-year-old son, 14-year-old son, mm -hmm. uh, a father of a 14-year-old daughter, the way you touch them. Right. You know. It says something. It says something. It? It's, it's a, it's, it's a, it speaks louder sometimes in words. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one of the greatest ways to get to your children is by going over and giving them a hug mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. touching them, mm -hmm. letting them know that they can be at ease. Right. You can trust what I'm going to say. Right. You're you know, important to you're me. You're important to me. I, I'm focused on you. Mm -hmm. you I know. care about you. I yes. love you. Yes. Come on. Just for who you are. I care mm -hmm. about, you know, who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. You know, a simple touch 
says a lot, mm -hmm. you know, especially when a person's heart is broken. Yeah, this broken. Is good. If you can, you know, just simply uh, at a time when a person is grieving, that's not a time for a lot of words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your words will get all mixed up and jumbled up and misinterpreted at a time that a person is hurt, hurting a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But if you just simply... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Touch them on the shoulder and just let them know you care about them. Mm -hmm. That communicates way more yeah, than words. It, it really does. And I, I, I was reading in, in the scripture, as you were reading, in the Amplified, the Bible says that Jesus fervently, uh, let's, see, let's get back to where you were. You were in Mark chapter 10. And he said that um, he took them, the children, up one by one in his arms mm -hmm. and fervently in, invoked a blessing. Mm -hmm. So this was so important to Jesus. Right. That he would touch each one of them. Right. And it, even the description that he fervently. He fervently. Yeah. And you can imagine, you know, the things that Jesus must have imparted mm -hmm. to those children. Mm -hmm. And you have to imagine mm -hmm. that some of those children oh. were the next generation of Christians. Mm -hmm. That some of those children, for all we know, uh, they they went through the wrath of uh, of Nero and mm -hmm. some of these other you know uh, Roman um, uh, See, uh, leaders yeah, yeah. Emperors, yeah. emperors and leaders who were you know who were harsh to the Christians mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and so you can imagine that as he imparted that blessing they were empowered to go out empowered that's the word yeah and they and they saw they saw the love. They they sensed the they love. They sensed the love. They felt the love of mm -hmm. God. You know, and we said earlier in this week that a man must have a proper love of self. Mm -hmm. You must love yourself. Now I know we're speaking to a broken society, a generation of men and women that have been touched inappropriately, and now the touch represents something that okay, I don't want to do that. We right. don't do that. You know, I, I love you, daughter. I love you, son. But we don't do that. But one of the things I remember in the scripture, in John chapter one, the Bible says that the law was given by Moses. There are some things that you can give far away. Mm -hmm. I can give you instructions far away. I can tell you what to do far away. I can send you an email. I can give you a text. I can chat with you, you know, and I'm 3,000 miles away mm -hmm. and I expect you to do it. Right. But, but the Bible says, but grace came through Jesus Christ. Mm. So Jesus came with the grace of God. Jesus came with the love of God. He wanted to fervently touch his children again. Um, I'm reminded of when the Lord spoke to, I believe it was Brother Copeland. And uh, he told Brother Copeland, he said, when Adam sinned in that garden, he said, it took everything in me Mm -hmm. Not to run over and just grasp and hold my son who had fallen into sin. Wow. This is God talking. It took everything in me not to run over there and touch my son. Because he saw a hurting child. Mm -hmm. See, we look at Adam and say, oh, I can't wait to get to heaven because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Adam have it. But, you know, God didn't think like that. God said... <laughs> That's my son and he's hurting. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when you see your child fall off of a bicycle or you see your child fall fall out of a whatever. You know, I heard mm -hmm. Creflo Dollar say he fell out of a moving car. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, he said he fell out of a moving car. Wow. But can you imagine the feeling that a parent has to see your child fall? Mm -hmm. God saw Adam and he wanted to run over and grasp him, but he couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. He couldn't touch him. Why not? Because if he would have touched him, he would have died. Right. The holiness of God. Right. And so, can you imagine when Jesus came to the earth as God in flesh? He says, I can finally touch my people. Mm -hmm. I can finally grab them. I can finally evoke a blessing upon them. I can finally tell them how much and show them how much I love them. Can yes. you imagine that? Mm -hmm. And so, that's the, the same mindset we need to have as kingdom fathers and kingdom families. Remember, you're touching your children. You're imparting a blessing upon them. Right. And in this is when they're going to be empowered to prosper. That's right. And so one of the things that we need to remember was Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Mm -hmm. Now, mm. this was the last 
thing that Jesus did before he departed. Now on that road, you know, it's it's in the Gospel of Gospel of Luke, mm -hmm, twenty four, and uh, chapter twenty four, and verses fifty through fifty one. But you could almost back it up a bit, you mm -hmm. know, because to me it's one of the most interesting stories in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Two of his disciples going down the road, you know, just talking about him. Mm. And wow, this is good. <laughs> this is so good. And and uh, you know, they thought. They thought that Jesus was a ghost, mm -hmm. you know. They didn't realize that it was actually him. Mm -hmm. And so they're talking, not realizing who mm -hmm. he was. Mm -hmm. You know, they were looking for the physical form that they remembered Jesus in. But the last thing Jesus did before he left was he blessed his children. That's good. And I think it's one of the most powerful things. Mm. Uh, I think I want to go to that place in the Bible where it talks about it. Is that Luke uh, chapter 24? Luke 24 and verse 35. And it says, the two, Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they walked along the road and how they had recognized him as he was breaking the bread. So when, they, when Jesus broke the bread, they recognized who he was, his mm -hmm. disciples. And just as they were talking about it, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. Now, you're but, reading it from the New Living Translation, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure everybody was all on the same page. But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Mm -hmm. And in verse 38, he says, Why are you frightened, he asked. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look mm. at my feet. Mm. You can see that it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I'm not a ghost. Mm. Because ghosts mm. don't have bodies as you see that I do. And he spoke and showed them his hands and feet. Still they, wow. they stood there in disbelief, filled with joy and wonder. <laughs> Can you imagine they're mm. happy but they're in wonder at the same mm. time? And then he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? And here he is still trying to show them that it was really him and mm. that he was really alive. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and he ate it as they watched. And then he said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the psalm must be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Then he opened their minds to understand the scripture, the That's Bible so says. Yeah. And he says, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations beginning in what? Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. which was the site of the Passover, mm -hmm. which is the site where he was crucified during the same time that the lambs were slaughtered. Mm. Wow. That there is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnessing, you are witnesses of all these things. And now I send the Holy Spirit, just as my father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with the power yeah. from heaven. Yeah. Now, that's good. We know that in Acts 1 and uh, I think around verse 8, before verse 8, there's another story of him ascending. But listen to this, verse 50. It says, but Jesus led them to Bethany lifting his hands to heaven and he blessed them. Mm -hmm. What's the last thing Jesus did before he blessed departed? Them. He blessed his disciplined ones. Mm -hmm. You know, your disciples, if you are disciplined in the things of God, mm -hmm. if you follow his commandments and you, you are a doer of the word and not just a hearer, you are one of his disciplined ones. Mm -hmm. And so you can receive the blessing. It's so good. Yeah, it's you so know, good. When we think yeah. about our connection mm -hmm. uh, with the gospels mm -hmm. and it says in verse 51, while he was blessing them, he lifted them and was taken. He left them and was taken up to heaven. Mm -hmm. So they worshiped him and they returned to Jerusalem filled, filled with great joy. Great joy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and they spent all of their time in the temple praising God. Well, wow. so one of the last things that Jesus did on this earth, on this earth, was to bless. Mm -hmm. That was one of the last things he did. And, you know, our time is up, but I really want you to remember that, you know, before your children leave their home, bless them. Before your wife walks out of the door, 
bless her, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, wives to your husbands, bless your husband, mm -hmm. you know. Speak well over them. Say you're going to have a great day today. Your day is going to be filled with favor and joy. Your day is going to be filled with, I, I feel the Holy Ghost is talking about it. Right. Uh, I, I can tell right now that there, there's a blessing that needs to come upon somebody that's watching this right now. Mm -hmm. And we tell you right now, you're going to win and you're not going to lose. You're going to get up if you've fallen down and you're going to keep on walking. Yeah. God has his hand on your life. And though you may think you have a couple of bad chapters, God is still writing your story. Mm -hmm. So yes. your book is still in print. And I want you to know this. God is blessing you now through our words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm telling you, this is a good one. I hate to stop. We may have to pick this up <laughs> next week. We well, there's pick. there's more. Yeah. Uh, uh, how how do you say it? There's more meat left on that bone. Well, well we might have to pick it up okay. next week because this is so good, and I I hate to just stop like this. What just... I do like is that really through this this story, you see the power of the Father to mm -hmm. impart and to bless mm -hmm. and. I think sometimes men can get discouraged, you know, maybe from your family's reaction or your family's response, but don't let their reaction stop you from doing what you're anointed to do. So if you have a, a thought and a desire to bless your children, well, don't let anything stop you from imparting a blessing. So good. You yeah, know, yeah. and uh, I would just say, you know, trust God and have faith in God and be obedient to the unction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you today. I pray that you receive this word. Listen, we want to give you an opportunity to sow into this week, sow into this broadcast, sow, sow into this ministry and become a partner. The same anointing that's on our lives. It's the same anointing on our partners. Amen. Listen, the power to bless, the power to be a, a good husband or wife, the power to have a good marriage mm -hmm. or get your families restored is on us. Mm -hmm. And it can also be on you when you partner with us. Listen, there's the opportunity to give. There's a QR code right there on our page. Or you can go to our website, wordpowerchurch slash donate. Uh, wordpowerchurch.com slash donate and you can give that way. Listen, we love you. Have an awesome, awesome weekend. Listen, go to church on Sunday. I know a great yes. church. 2401 <laughs> Magnolia Drive would be on our property. Praise on the property. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Let us bless the people. Okay. Amen. It has a whole new meaning now, huh? That's right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. We declare shalom and blessings over your life. And we declare that Jesus is Lord and he's upholding all things by the word of his power. Be blessed. We love you. And we'll see you next time. Amen. Amen.